can't be too careful these days. No, um, I don't have coronavirus or anything like that. Um, and um, that's not the reason I haven't done one of these videos in about two weeks either. Just um, busy, busy at work and stuff like that. And um, But anyway, um, today's topic is, of course, not the coronavirus, because who needs to hear any more about that? You know, go watch the news. Um, I'm talking about um, Supergirl. Um, uh, specifically more about the TV series. Um, but I'm going to go into the other, you know, in the earlier uh, live-action incarnation, which is, of course, the 1984 movie that starred Helen Slater. Now, um, actually, the comic book, uh, the original comic book came out in night, or well, the character was introduced in Action Comics in 1959 in uh, issue 252. So, uh, and from there, you know, they, uh, I think they killed... Uh, Supergirl off in the uh, Crisis series in DC Comics, so uh, um, so she didn't, you know, she wasn't a very woke character when they reintroduced her in the 90s, you know, with the, you know, half T and the um, skimpy little skirt, obviously. But uh, in um, 1984, uh, they decided, and this, this was in... Uh, uh, in the canon of the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, um, the Jimmy Olsen from the Superman movies was actually one of the few actors they could get from that to um, make an appearance. And um, she, uh, th the plot of it, it, it starred Helen Slater, um, Peter O'Toole, who was from her uh, home world or you know of Argo City, and her parents were played. Well, the mom was played by Mia Farrow. And there was, I don't know, some British guy. I don't know what his name was actually off the top of my head. Um, but those are the notable actors. And um, Faye, is it Faye Dunaway played her, uh, Faye Dunaway played her mom. Or no, Faye Dunaway played, played the evil witch. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, it's a ridiculous plot. She, um, Peter O'Toole's character, I think it's Zoltar or whatever, uh, gives her these like this weird glass sort of implement it looks like it was made a head shop and it's some kind of like pipe bong thing and the Omega Hedron which is like this weird glowing orb that you know powers all of Argo City so they just gave it to a teenage girl to play with and so she's playing with this thing and they had like what was protecting the whole their city world was this 3M plastic <laughs> that um, got torn up when she made like a a uh, like a sort of a butterfly out of the uh, from using the uh, Mega Hedron and this sort of you know sort of wand tool thing. So um, so when you know the Mega Hedron gets sucked out and Peter O'Toole's in deep shit because he was you know took it he didn't have permission to you know be messing around with the thing and <laughs> so he. She, um, so, uh, uh, Z her name Zara, was it Z Zara? It's the same name as, uh, or Kara, Kara Zorel. Same name as, uh, Melissa Benoist's character from the TV series. She, uh, she, um, hops into a pod and then, like, goes to, uh, Earth to retrieve the Omega Hedron, which is just for some reason the Omega Hedron just goes to Earth, so you know, so she can become Supergirl. Um. So anyway, she she goes off in this pod, and um, that you know she just gets access to. You don't have to I mean just a kid can just you know launch off in one of these things. And um, goes to comes to Earth, and she you know the pod goes into the water, and then she just like flies out, you know in you know her costume and everything, you know cape and everything. She just somehow it just materialized on her, around her or whatever, and she's just flying around the world. And keep in mind, and I didn't mention this before, she has three days before Argo City um, goes dark and everybody dies. And so she spends a lot of time doing things that it's just ridiculous. She she enrolls in a private school that Lois Lane's sister <laughs> is enrolled at, coincidentally. She just wanders through the woods and 
she, you know, uh, assumes the identity of Linda Lee, which is not the identity of uh, the alter ego of, of Supergirl in the, uh, the TV series that's currently uh, airing. Um, so she does that and um, fights... It is full cast here, but Faye Dunaway is Selena. Yeah, she's um, has to has to fight her because that's where the Omega Hedron wound up. It landed in she was having a picnic with one of the professors at the school that Supergirl is going to be attending, and uh, she gets her hands on this thing, you know, and she's just a crazy witch that throws cocktail parties and haunted amusement park houses and nothing in this movie makes remotely any fucking sense. And I'm not going to do a whole, um, you know, review or um, synopsis of it, but basically that, that's what it is and has very low ratings online. I think uh, Rotten Tomatoes has it about 9%, so um, that should tell you something. But, in, you know, I remember seeing it growing up. I saw it in theaters and it's the other Superman movie, so it, to me it's sort of it's about, I think it's just a little bit better than Superman 4, but then Superman 4 is so awful it's good type of thing, so you know what I mean? You got John Cryer in it, who actually plays Lex Luthor in the current um, Supergirl TV series, so that's interesting. And Supergirl, Helen Slater, who played Supergirl in the movie, plays um, uh, Supergirl's adopted Earth Mother, or the one that takes her in with her... Uh, um, I would call her stepsister, Alex. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so that that's basically super. That's basically Supergirl for you. Um, I would suggest watching it because it's funny. Um, if you're fans of that, so um, so uh, moving on to the TV series Supergirl. Um, Supergirl came out around 2015, and I've been watching it from the beginning. And the first season was fun and campy, and I liked it, basically. Um, had had, um, getting it, my throat's dry. Um, Callista Flockhart played her boss, um, um, Cat Grant, and she, uh, ran Cat Co., which was this media conglomerate that she, and, um, uh, Calista Flockhart's character, maybe after the first two seasons left, and they had a, a Lex Luthor-like villain in the first movie. He was a, like a billionaire guy named Maxwell Lord, played by Peter Facinelli, um, who I liked actually, and I kind of liked a lot of the characters where they were in the first season. Um, you know, uh, it. You know, I mean, as things move on, they they changed a lot of things. I mean, characters were just sort of written off and you never really saw too much of them again, um, and everything, and, you know, the, f the fun, cheesy part of it just began to, like, get old, um, after a couple of seasons, and just some of the ridiculous, um, you know, plot lines, and it just, it just became very in line with what's going on in the country, with Trump and everything, and it went out of its way to be woke, um, they would shoehorn it in, they had a character, and it's nothing's wrong with, you know, having a trans character, um, but they do, her name's, uh, Dreamer, and, um, she's cool and everything, but it's just, they sort of, it, it just seemed a little, as I said, shoehorned in, and then they, um, made, uh, Supergirl's Earth sister, Alex, who works for the DEO, which is the D Department of X extra normal um, operations, which is kind of a secret government organization that um, there's always just a lot of power struggle issues there, you know, I mean, um, in corruption, so Alex is uh, usually at odds with that, and Supergirl became an employee of that after she revealed her, you know, came out as Supergirl, and because her sister's plane was going down, and before that they had told her she, they just want her to have a normal life because Superman exists, and and because of all the alien xenophobia, they didn't want her coming out, and so on and so forth. But, so, anyway, 
And I liked a lot of the characters. I like Martian Manhunter in the show and everything like that. But the uh, it's 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 a lot of it's like a lot of freaking shows. They just get so into the whole sort of social identity politics, um, sort of fueled plot lines. They just forget to write a decent plot and let things happen organically. They you know so. Uh, but yeah, the the show has just become like super ridiculous <laughs> in a lot of ways. It really has. Um, you know, they introduce Brainiac, and they kind of, um, after the, uh, they introduced uh, Lex Luthor, who's played by John Cryer, who was preceded by his sister, Lena Luthor, who became, who was so, sort of good in the beginning, but she had some ulterior motives, obviously, and she became terms with Supergirl, and then um, she felt betrayed when she revealed her identity to her because, you know, she just felt like she was lied to, I guess. I don't know. Um, and some people sort of just figure out, you know, who the hell Supergirl is because she's just wearing glasses, so who cares? Um, I mean, Cat Grant did at the end, but she didn't tell her... I mean, the last time uh, Calista Flockhart was on the show, but she didn't tell uh, Kara that she knew she was Supergirl. She just said, you know, looked away as she was walking away or whatever. It goes, okay, Supergirl or whatever. You know, that was the end of that shit. So... Um... And, but yeah, it's, the show is just, um, I, especially with everything that's happened with the, uh, last crisis, um, um, <clears throat> special, you know, the five episode crisis special, they killed off Green Arrow and all the other worlds were destroyed. So the heroes were all con like the Flash and Black Lightning and, um, who else is there? It, they're escaping me now, but they're all consolidated onto one world. And they're sort of in this Hall of Justice type place. It looks like the Hall of Justice from the old cartoon series, the Super Friends cartoon series from the early '80s. And they, um, there was a uh, cage that a monkey was in, and the cage was uh, said Gleep on it. That was the the label on the cage, which is uh, the Wonder Twins, Jan and Zan's uh, monkey. So. Um, Lots of nods to that, and they had so many cameos in that. You know, the, the Flash from the old TV series, um, Huntress from Birds of Prey. They, you know, that was on a certain Earth. Um, Burt Ward, um, even from the uh, 1999 Batman movie, it was a. Uh, what was the detective's name? Anyway, you know, I'm talking about the guy who was the uh, reporter, the journalist, or whatever. Who, um, who used to be in the TV series Arliss, but I can't think of the, the uh, Knox. His name was Knox. The last name was Knox. But, um, yeah, so they, they had all these cameos. Um, kind of just jammed them in. But it was it was sort of okay. Um, so, yeah, them and the, um, the uh, Legends of Tomorrow, some of the, those people were uh, brought in to the new Justice League. For the TV series, and they actually had a cameo from the the Flash, who was from the Justice League movie. Um, he was face to face with Barry Allen or uh, uh, Grant guess it, Grant Gustav. Okay, that Flash, the TV Flash, and the movie Flash. So it was kind of um, interesting. Um, I mean, it was it was it was entertaining enough. It could have been better, but it was it was a real mishmash. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a show. It's 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 five seasons in. I mean, I didn't expect it to go more than like maybe three or four. Um, so, so it's sort of at its twilight here, um, meaning you know, end. I would have to say, and the ratings are going into the tank along with you know, uh, Batwoman, who is also part of the uh, you know, uh, just New Justice League, because they're all in the same world now. Which makes it more convenient, they don't have to leap back and forth and stuff like that um, through a time wormhole or whatever um, portal to get to one another or anything like that. But, um, and so that, that's basically where the show is, where that show is sort of like at. Um, but, you know, getting back to the uh, comic book version of Supergirl.
Um, the, as you can see, the comic book version of Supergirl is a lot different than the um, TV version. I mean, they even changed uh, the costume in the television series. Um, they took away her, like, kind of skirt, which wasn't skimpy at all, and they gave her pants and stuff like that. Um, the comic book version in the last two decades has always been she's wearing very skimpy clothes and um, to obviously because, you know, the uh, demographic that buys those comics, you know, she wasn't written for to be necessarily a uh, role model for young girls or whatever, I guess. I don't know. Um, I haven't bought a lot of Supergirl comics lately. I have, I have some of them, but not. Um, but, you know, um, and it's, yeah, of course, all the, you know, comic book characters, even the, you know, male characters have, like, really, you know, they're all uh, muscular and toned and fit and everything like that, as the females are, and they're always wearing essentially tights, so what would you expect? So, I don't know. Um, not everything is meant to be PC, and it's just entertainment. Um, I think I've said the same thing before about James Bond. Uh, it's it's not uh, it, it's not there to to it's it's entertainment. It's not there to pay service or be a, a um, it, it's not there to send a message or anything. It's not there to offend anybody. And it's not there to you know. Um, it, it's just meant to be. They're just. It's he's just a. You know, James Bond is just a fantasy, you know, British agent that doesn't exist in real life who drives around in an Austin Martin packed with an array of, you know, gadgets and weaponry, and, you know, that's not even what a real MI6 agent's like in real life. And Supergirl's not a real person in any way, shape, or form. She's, you know, nobody has superpowers, um, presumably, anyway. And, um, you know, um, they certainly wouldn't... Um, have cast a actress who was unattractive to play her, who was in good shape. I mean, get real. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm. I, I you know I'm not gonna give them all these sort of um, the creators of that show all these you know woke points because they hired a lot of people who were good looking. I mean, they did. You know, they're not gonna hire like you know some morbidly obese character to you know be on that show, much less, you know, play the lead character, um, it just wouldn't make any sense, so, um, but I guess that's really all I'd have to say about it, um, it, in so far as criticism, <laughs> if I'm, go you know, basically, I mean, I do have a habit of pointing out and, uh, the, uh, hypocrisy of, of a lot of these sort of SJW, uh, minded individuals who think they're making the world a better place by um, pointing the finger at everybody else for for uh, perpetuating toxic masculinity and um, uh, not uh, not supporting roles in Hollywood that are respectful to women or anything like that um, I certainly don't uh, what, you know, I don't, I certainly, I try not to, you know, I don't feel that I disrespect women or anything like that. Um, and I'm not someone who, uh, writes these shows or casts these shows or do the, you know, kind of things. It's just basically that's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's marketing, you know, you're not going to sell, you know, create a lot of ad revenue on a show where you've cast a bunch of people who don't look like the characters that people have, um, come come to expect so you know um i guess that's the best way to put it other than that um uh and you know it, it's it's but it is i mean there is to a point where it is it is they do r ridiculously sexualize you know wonder woman or uh batwoman or batgirl in the in the comic books and the animation animated little movies and TV shows throughout the years. I've been collecting comics my whole life, virtually, um, and there's, you know, the female characters, a Catwoman, for instance, a lot of Batman comics, um, Poison Ivy, um, there are, whether it's the comics or animation or a movie or video games, 
they're all very sexy. I mean, um, it goes without saying, but their sexuality is sort of part of their character. Um, and I guess that's maybe part of the discussion or debate about whether these, these, um, you know, this should change or not, or whatever. So, um, anyway, I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts about it. Um, if you have any suggestions for future episodes of The Spectre, I'd like to hear those as well. Um, so, uh, feel free to drop those comments below. Um, like and subscribe and uh, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Um, uh, I hope you're safe. I hope you're, you know, just be careful. I know everybody's panicking right now and all that stuff. Um, uh, me, I'm Mr. Anxiety, so uh, I'm dealing with it as well. So we can all, you know, I think everybody can relate to that. Unfortunately, we don't have superheroes and, uh, you know, uh, people who, you know, like Star Labs or something where they can come up with like an antidote we can um, sort of release into the atmosphere, you know, somehow. Uh, but that's just not how problems are solved in the real world, unfortunately. But anyway, um, so I guess stay safe, wash your hands, and, um, you know, we'll all get through this. And, you know, it'll be a couple months from now, and it'll probably all be over. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching.